One of the purposes of the practice is, in the Buddha's words, to see the as yet unseen, to realize the as yet unrealized, to attain the as yet unattained. Now, that means doing the, doing the as yet undone. These things don't just come floating in while you're sitting here waiting for them. You have to look at what your mind is doing and see what you can do that you haven't done before. Where do you feel the breath in the body right now? Where is it most comfortable to stay focused? What kind of breathing feels best? If you know that already, go right there. A lot of us have an unskillful habit of taking a while to settle down. Like our hunter, checking his trap lines. We have to make sure that this is okay, and that's okay, and this is taken care of, and I've thought about that, and I've thought about this. And then we maybe think about the breath a little bit, and whoops, kind of think about that over there. Or as you settle down, you find that there's some hidden thought that you've been suppressing for the day, and well, you've got to deal with that. And sometimes you just you know, the karate chop to say, look, enough of this. Just settle right down. Most of the things that you think about at the beginning of a meditation session are things you've been thinking about many times before. And they can go perfectly well without being rethought or hashed over. There's a term they have in Pali, excuse me, in Thai, it's called dead cot. And it comes from a phrase to pluck something so that it's totally cut off from the plant. So you've been thinking about things in the course of the day, well, can you just cut that off and say, look, I'm not going to go there, and really carry through with it, because that's what dead cot means, is that you do something decisively and you stick with it. That's how concentration arises in the mind. You make up your mind, you're going to do this, and you do it. And then just keep on doing it. And what other nibbling away conversations that come at the edge of your concentration, you don't have to pay attention to them. Just keep focusing in, focusing in, focusing in. What feels really good right now, stay with that. And you don't have to humor all the other members of the committee. Just plow right through. At the same time, don't put a lot of pressure on the body as you're doing this. It has to be a mental kind of pressure. It's the decisiveness that keeps you here, keeps you here. Because we do have to make decisions. It's not all, it's not all good, as they say, and it's not all just oneness. You have to make choices, things you have to sacrifice. One of the most basic principles in the practice is if you see a lesser happiness that's getting in the way of a larger happiness, you have to be willing to sacrifice the lesser one for the sake of the larger one. We want to have everything. We want to have our life a certain way, we want to have our thoughts a certain way. Everything has to be like this, 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 and we want all that, and we want enlightenment too. Well, it turns out enlightenment comes only when you can give up other things. And when you see that something has to be given up, you say, okay, this is, I've been with this a long time. I've seen its limitations. Let's go for something that's more unlimited. Now, because we haven't attained this or seen this or realized the goal yet, it is something of a gamble. But then what is life if not a gamble? And this is a safe bet. You've got the Buddha on the side of all that's good in the practice. You've got all the noble disciples, you've got the, the great Ajans. And they're all saying it's more than worth it. And they're not saying that to get something out of you. It's not like the advertisements out there that they're trying to sell you something, so of course they'll say it's really great, whatever. 
They're just reporting it. They're Johns. So at the very least for this hour, make a gamble. See, whatever thought comes up, you're not going to go there. You're going to just stay with the breath, stay with the breath. Show a little bit more decisiveness than you have in the past. And that's how concentration arises, and that's how concentration is maintained, and how it becomes something you can rely on. If you're the kind of person who you know, sticks your toe in the water and says, oh, it's a little bit cold, and you jump back, and you stick a little bit there, oh, I don't know about this, back and forth, back and forth, you just stay on the edge of the lake. You never get to know what it's like to be in the lake. And it may be different from what it's like being on the shore. As the Buddha said, there's that, you know, the lake of the jhanas, the cool spring welling up. Or the lotuses, when the water finally gets still, the lotus is saturated from their roots to their tips. We've heard the image. Well, what's it like? It's not going to just happen on its own. You have to decide that you want it to happen. And then you learn how to make sure that the desire to make it happen doesn't get in the way. It requires some skill. But there's a huge element that's just a matter of being decisive, saying, yeah, this is what I really want, and this is what I'm going to stick with it. You've got the breath here. You've got all the instructions on how to deal with the breath so as to settle down. You don't need more than that, aside from your own decisiveness, your own intention. People sometimes ask about dependent core arising and how it applies to the meditation. Well, one of the important things is that even prior to your experience of the senses, you've got to have a certain intention. It's going to determine what you're going to experience. Well, it's the same with concentration. You have to have the intention and you have to be willing to stick with it. The point becomes determination. We read about the Ajans in their biographies and autobiographies. John Mahabua talking about the vows that he would take and how he took them very seriously. And John Lee, you read all about his vows. That's the kind of character that does well at concentration. So try to bring that decisiveness into your practice. And see if you come to realize something new. <laughs>